The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 830 a.m. Friday morning, 60 minutes to go until that opening bell. And we got a market in both directions overnight, pretty much flat nearing the open, but we were lower by the tune of about 30 S&P points that we've clawed back overnight. Right now, S&P is positive by five points, trading at 29.42. Got the Dow positive by 44 points, 24,420. NASDAQ futures negative by two points, trading at 93.53. Oil pulling back a bit off $1.35 at 32.57. We got the yields ticking lower a bit, 10-year yield at about 0.65%. Gold contract up about about $15 at 1737. Hong Kong stock markets, how about down about 5% with some tension between China and Hong Kong, tensions between US and China. We'll start things off. Let's jump over to the charts. And we'll start it off with the indices. There's your Dow, 24,402. You back it up to where we were at about 3 a.m. We were about 300 points lower in the Dow, 24,397. Since then, markets have charged higher since basically the Europe Open. NASDAQ 100, pretty similar charting pattern, 9341 right now. We're about 100 points above where we were trading at, at about 3 a.m. Eastern time. S&P 500, 2937. You see the lows, 2904. So you're talking about 33 S&P points, a full percentage point above where we were at last night. You back it up to midnight. There's your midnight action. You back it up to the close of trading yesterday, pretty much right where we were. But as you see, we traded down a percent. We're back up clawing those back. There's your crude oil chart. Crude, there's your midnight marker. There's the end of the day yesterday. You see the slide begin on crude from about, from about $34, quite a drop. You see it's about 9 p.m. Eastern time there. By the time you reach almost midnight, you drop $3 in the price of crude. We've now clawed back half of that at 32.60. Gold contract, talk about a little bit of volatility. Gold trading at 17.40. We saw a spike low to about 17.27 at 8 a.m. this morning. Coming into the long weekend, of course, Memorial Day weekend. Everyone be safe out there. And then Euro, U.S. dollar. 109 right now on the dot for the euro us dollar as we pull back a bit you back it up i mean we were above 110 early yesterday morning we're now 109 in that euro jumping around to other stories out there we'll start it off with hong kong so hong kong plunges more than five percent as Beijing plans to impose new security laws. So the Hong Kong protests, they were one of the biggest stories out there before COVID. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index plunged 5.56% by the close on Friday. So China's poised to impose a new national security law on Hong Kong after months of anti-government protests in the territory. The move has sparked worries that Beijing is tightening its grip on Hong Kong. China also announced at its annual parliamentary meeting that it will not set a GDP target for 2020. So stocks in Asia Pacific fell on Friday, rising tensions between US and China. Hang Seng, 5.56%. Uh, the news out there, even when you jump over to Bloomberg, big stories out here. China dares Trump to hit back with Hong Kong power grab. It's a lot going on right now. Uh, on the first day of China's biggest political event of the year, Xi sent a clear message to Trump. We're going to do what we want in Hong Kong and we're not scared of the consequences. I, would, I mean, they're locking it down, folks. China confirmed on Friday that it would effectively bypass the city's legislature to implement national security laws, which have been resisted by residents who fear they will erode freedoms of speech, assembly and the press. Yeah, I would agree. There's no way that's not going to happen. Uh, that is why believing in a strong freedom of the press, folks, no matter what you're thinking, is a essential to democracy. The announcement, which came on the same day China refrained from setting an economic growth target for the first time in decades, triggered immediate calls for press, fresh protests. You're going to see this this weekend, folks. Look to the headlines. You're going to see protests. If you lived in Hong Kong, if you have kids in Hong Kong, right, uh, I'm talking about the people there fighting for your democracy as China 
decides to lock it down, um, by bypassing the city's legislature, new national security laws. For Xi, the move allows Beijing to reassert dominance over a piece of Chinese territory where the government has rendered him impotent during sometimes violent protests last year facing rising unemployment in the mainland due to the COVID-19 outbreak. This story is going to stay in the press for a while, folks. And uh, when you have Hang Sang sinking almost 6% on that number, big numbers to start things off. U.S.-China tension rising over there for sure. Uh, and we'll see where that plays out. But that, the news headline this morning on the Hang Sang markets. NVIDIA out with their numbers last night. Revenue up 39% from last year. NVIDIA reported first quarter earnings after the bell. Stock was up over 50% this year, not including Thursday's after hours move. The company's data center business reported over $1 billion in revenue for the first time. Earnings per share, $1.80. Revenue, $3.08 billion. Wall Street was looking for $1.69 on revenue of $3 billion. COVID-19 created challenges in supply and demand. Early in the quarter, our partners' supply chains were disrupted. Shelter in place resulted in closure of retail outlets and China Eye Cafes, affecting sales of our gaming products. However, work from home, learn at home, and the gaming drove a surge in e-tail demand. Last year, during the first quarter, NVIDIA, NVIDIA had earnings of 0.88 on revenue of 2.2. I mean, crazy, right? They had, last year was 2.2. They're looking for $3.65 billion in revenue in its second fiscal quarter with gross margins. How about that? 58.6%. Got to be nice to be in the chip business. Under NVIDIA's fiscal calendar, the quarter ended on April 26th, over a month after the lockdowns in the U.S. NVIDIA is best known for making graphic processing units. Dave White, always talking about technology. Uh, NVIDIA, AMD, NVIDIA, the premium product, AMD. Kind of the bargain one, you could call it, uh, is as he puts it, you know, you, you're not, if you're in the creme de la creme, the premium products, NVIDIA, graphics cards, and for some context here, that's that's quite a chart, folks. This year alone, from 250 up to 350, you back it up, and we were at 132 just in June of 19. We're talking about almost a three-bagger there. And there it is, from 124. About a year and a half ago, and the run really began in June at about 136. Talk about a drop off during COVID for NVIDIA from 285. And this is where it's just remarkable that everything gets sold off, right? Everything, excuse me, everything gets sold off. Man, there were going to be some big winners and some big losers in the COVID-19 shutdown, but you just basically doubled from the low of 180 up to 360. And you see a pretty calm reaction to the NVIDIA news. We had some volatility, but you're only talking about from 358 to 456, not much, 10, $12 range for a $360 stock. And right now we're within almost $2 of where we closed yesterday on NVIDIA shares at about 352.74. Jumping over to AMD, since I mentioned them as well, Pulling back initially overnight, we're basically even right now to see where they've been on a three-year weekly. Good to be in the graphics sector, folks. <laughs> the chip processing from $9, even if you start the run from the beginning of, say, January of 2019, you were trading at 17 You really start the run at about October of 19 from 28 We're now trading at about 54 65 so we come into this first break, let's take a look at the VIX. Well, there's some longer term perspective for the VIX. And here's some shorter term perspective. As the market was at lows overnight, we were above 31. Right now, VIX back under 30. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be coming back, see what else we have on tap. Go over some of the stocks with action this Friday morning. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Larry Pezzavento is hosting a special event Thursday, May 21st from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Trade What You See, a live trading event. For the first time in over 10 years, Larry will host a live event where you'll watch over his shoulder as he trades the markets live. You'll see how he organizes his trading day, the times most likely to generate a signal, what outside information he ignores, and more importantly, what he does not ignore, and much more. Larry will trade the markets in real time, including the Euro US dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, the Dow, and E-mini S&P, crude oil, gold, treasury bonds, wheat and soybeans, and more. When you sign up, you get a month of his daily newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7 included. For all the details on Larry Pezzavento's live trading event on Thursday, May 21st, and to sign up today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. 
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metals sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. S&Ps right now, positive by four points. NASDAQ 100, negative by one. That NASDAQ 100, you talk about some strength. We got up to 95.10 yesterday, early in the day before we pulled back. I mean, check out, we are within reach, we'll call it, of that all-time high, 97.63. We were just above 9,500. Remarkable. We've clawed back almost all the losses from 66.28. We almost just rose 3,000 points in the NASDAQ 100 from March 23rd in under two months. It is May 22nd. Remarkable volatility continuing in that market. Jumping back to other headlines we got out there. So Joe Biden, he's out on CNBC this morning with an interview. One of the headlines among many, I'm sure, making their way out to the presses. I think Amazon should start paying their taxes. Well, I think they should start paying their taxes too. I'm a, I'm a big Amazon bull. Uh, there they may control the e-commerce world for the time being, along with maybe Walmart, throw some Target in there, Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, Uber Eats, delivering everything that you need for food. Amazon, Yesterday was up as high as 25.25 before pulling back late in the day. We're going to open basically flat, but Amazon, even on news like that, which is remarkable that you see the Democratic nominee in a closely contested presidential election coming up in less than six months, talking about that one particular company should start paying their taxes and the stock unchanged on that news. Can't phase the lead dog Amazon at 24.49 on that stock. And you want to talk about winners and losers, folks. How did the world not put together when Amazon traded from 21.76 down to 16.26 that we were all jumping online to order everything we needed? Amazon was basically telling the world that it was going to take them a week, two weeks, three weeks to get you anything because all they were doing was working as hard as they could to deliver products and they were backlogged because they had so much business going on. And Amazon trades from 16.26 up almost $900 from March 16th to yesterday's high of 25.25. Remarkable, folks. Other headlines out there we have going on. How about this one I saw? Uh, well, where are we? Netflix, yeah. So, so yesterday, Netflix comes out. Strong move that they are going to proactively cancel your membership 
if you do not use it and you don't reply to their prompt. If you have not used Netflix in over a year, they are going to contact you proactively, ask you if you still wanna keep your membership, and if you don't reply to that, they're gonna stop charging you. I mean, remarkable, we're all, you know, it used to be gym memberships. You ever hear of a gym calling you up if you haven't used it in a year saying, hey, you haven't been here for a year. We're, we're gonna cancel you, all right? We're gonna stop charging you because you're not using our product. Is that cool? I mean, that is just flexing the muscles for Netflix. Now, what's interesting here, I really wanna go over, and this is the key part. Netflix said that its inactive accounts represent less than a half of 1% of its overall member base and are already factored into its financial guidance. The company saw a huge uptick in subscribers in the past quarter, less than one half of 1%. So that's basically one out of every 200 people that is paying for Netflix has not used the product in a year. Another way of saying that is that 199 out of 200 subscribers on the Netflix platform have logged in within the last year. Now you would say, yeah, of course they have. That's a year. You're paying for Netflix. What else are you watching, right? In the world of recurring charges, 199 out of 200 people paying for something in a recurring charge and actually using it over a yearly basis. I wonder what LA Fitness could deliver in those types of numbers. Could you imagine if uh, some of those gyms and not even factoring before COVID, right? A recurring subscription on a gym. How many people do you think don't go for six months, a year at a time? I'm an LA Fitness member. That comes from Bally's a while back. Uh, I haven't been there obviously since COVID, but there will be times I go on streaks. I haven't been a, a month, a couple months. Maybe you're, maybe you're being active, you're biking outside. Nonetheless, strong move by Netflix saying, we're gonna proactively cancel anybody not using our products instead of just letting those charges ring. Netflix shares. This morning, we're gonna open basically flat, talk about charging higher on COVID as well. You go from above 380 down to below 300. We're now up about 50% from the lows at 436.25. Interesting story that they are choosing to make that decision to cancel people if they just haven't heard from them in a while. All right, stocks making moves. It is still earnings season. Deer, the construction equipment maker out with their numbers. Fiscal second quarter earnings, 211 a share. Market was looking for a buck 62. Revenue beat as well. Deer said it expects global equipment sales to fall 30 to 40 percent this year as the COVID epidemic, epidemic pandemic weighs on demand. DE is their symbol. There you see the volatility in the long term. We're going to open higher today from 180 to 106. We're going to open at about 148. There's your action on their earnings spiking higher to about 148.50 uh, with a beat on earnings, a beat on revenue as well. Alibaba, the China-based e-commerce giant, beat estimates on both top and bottom lines for the fiscal fourth quarter, a trillion dollars in gross merchandise volume for the first time in the just concluded fiscal year. Not bad, a trillion dollars in the fiscal year. Alibaba benefited from an increase in online shopping due to the coronavirus outbreak. Baba is their symbol, B-A-B-A. -B -A. There you see the volatility. Last night we were lower. All right, maybe we're talking about some China, U.S. tensions, Hong Kong going on, but we come out with the earnings, spike higher, and guess what? We're lower again, down about four bucks on Alibaba on their earnings. Pretty strong earnings. Foot Locker continuing the retail trend this week. Foot Locker lost 67 cents a share, wider than the 25 cents the market was looking for. Revenue also missed estimates. Comp sales, you ready for this? Plunging a wider than expected 42.8%. Foot Locker has also temporarily suspended its quarterly dividend. Foot Locker FL is their symbol. There you see the news from 30. We're down almost 10% to 27.15 for some context and where we've been in this stock. We we're at about 40, down to 17. We're gonna open at about 27 towards the higher end. Some malls opening back up, retail opening back up, but a tough sector when you're dealing with 42.8% comp sales. Lululemon has said it reopened more than 150 of its retail locations with the athletic apparel maker planning to re reopen about 200 more stores over the next two weeks. New set of reopening guidelines, enhanced cleaning, modified hours, limits to the number of customers in a store at any time. Lulu, been quite a bull run for Lulu over the last few years and it's just not stopping. There's your action folks and we are now above where we were prior to covid for Lululemon down to 128.85. We're now trading at 268.27. Yesterday was the high. We're gonna open anywhere between about 267.70 to 269. Quite a run continuing for Lulu. You back it up. I mean, we're just at 47. We're gonna be at 275. 
Let's see if we even go, that's a three year. How far can we go back? Yeah, I mean, this thing just for it from 2010 to 2016, 17, right? Just hanging tough and then it just explodes. From 50 bucks, we're talking about a five bagger basically from the end of 2016. No, that's the end of 2017, excuse me. Yeah, about three years, you go from $50 and change up to like 275. Palo Alto Networks, quarterly earnings, a buck 17 a share. Consensus estimate was 94. Revenue also beat forecast, said it will benefit from a continued increase in remote working. P-A-N-W is their symbol. We'll check out the long-term chart first, talk about some volatility. We'll zoom it in on the year. There's your COVID collapse from 251 down to 125. We're gonna open at 243, folks, coming right back up to that high. Just remarkable, check out that pop from 230 to 243.60 this morning. Stay tuned, we'll be coming back to finish up the program, see what else we have on Friday trading, what you should keep your eyes on in the market. Stay tuned, folks, we'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information.
Welcome back, folks. Markets pretty much where we started off the program. S&P's positive by three, NASDAQ 100 negative by six, the Dow positive by 22 points right now. You get the Russell positive by six. Shout out to the YouTube comments section. Great community going on over there, folks. Got all of the Tiger's Den as well. Two great communities, but giving a shout out, get over there. You can check it out right on YouTube. Just search TFNN Live. You can subscribe to the TFNN channel. That's where all the archive programs are stored. And uh, get in there and uh, experience what they're talking about. Lots of good market action. I got the chart up there right now. They've been in there, whether it's EKS, our man Earl. Uh, we've got no spin in there. I'm sure they keep coming in there. Matt Koopa, there they go. RP, Kevin, we're all out. We're all, we're all in the room getting ready for the Friday trading action. Jumping over to other headlines we have going on in the market. Where are we? Stocks making moves. There we go. I want to get into raw stores. Continuing with retail, quarterly loss, 87 cents a share. Surprising analysts who would expect a profit of three cents a share. Not what you want to do, folks. Ross Stores, R-O-S-T is their symbol. You see the spike lower on the news from 98 to about 94.40. And we also had, where were we? Hewlett Packard, I want to get into. So seven cents a share below estimates, quarterly earnings of 22 cents a share. The company also unveiled a cost-cutting plan designed to save at least a billion dollars. HPE is their symbol, but to no avail from 1040 down to 956 on their numbers. And jumping back to the commodities as we go to wrap it up, there's crude oil. Be interesting to see where crude finishes out the session right now at 32.64. There's your gold contract at 17.37. What else we have coming up, folks? Larry did a great job yesterday for his all-day trading event. That archive is going to be available for subscribers today. If you want to check that out, you can still sign up, gain access to the archive. And also, Basil Chapman did a great job filling in for Larry yesterday. Check it out on the front page at TFNN.com. Six days from right now, he's going to be doing a live webinar with subscribers to the opening call with a review of Basil's favorite technical tools that have produced strong gains in 2020 for opening call subscribers. Basil will be in there for 90 minutes on next Thursday. Check it out, folks. Stay tuned. Who do we have coming up? Our man, Larry Pesavento with Trade What You See. I'll be back at 10 o'clock with Tom. Live programming all day at TFNN. Have a great Friday, everybody.